What is going on everyone and welcome to Cart 6T3. My name is Ben. Thank you very much for stopping by. If you didn't mind uh, hitting a like on the video, possibly sometime during the video. I had a somebody ask me why I should they should hit the like or subscribe or whatever without watching the video. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying just do it now. I mean, you could do it now if you want to do it now. But if you like the video, hit the like on the video. <laughs> and also, if you are new here, if you didn't mind subscribing, that would be amazing if you like this content. If you like this content. Uh, <laughs> it's really freaking cold in New York now. Uh, kind of glad. Still out of my element here. Matter of fact, my my daughter came over, hung out with a friend. They stayed over at uh, uh, mom and dad's house. Uh, rearranged some stuff. Hopefully I got stuff kind of in the... feels as if I'm stepping on stuff. I'm going to have to review this video and, and see if there's any adjustment I can do. She moved all my crap is what I'm getting at. And, and I, I don't appreciate it. I know it's her room. Kind of technically not. My house. My, whatever. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> you don't care about any of that. We are going to uh, discuss uh, running multiple classes today. This is something that I've only done once, but a lot of kart racers do it. Okay, uh, I guess we will start with... Oh, I moved this back up here. It's, the clip on here, it's, I don't know what to do with it. I know it looks funny having the mic up on my, my, my hat, but it is what it, it also covers up my baldness. Uh, so, I uh, killed two birds with one. So, anyway, uh, I've only run multiple classes... Maybe a handful of times. I guess back in the Paradise days, I would run KT100, and then I would run the same KT100 in the open class because they had a whole bunch of DNFs. Yes, you know, you saw some of my footage on this channel that a KT at that big track, you can, you know, maintain a ton of momentum in the corner. And obviously, you know, I've, I've run UAS for a very long time, DNFs. Uh, motor failures, breakage of parts, you're, you're really hard on stuff. The KT is, you know, just a, a, a faster clone, uh, essentially, uh, two-stroke though. And I would be able to pick off, you know, some, some pretty good positions. I don't think I ever won on the KT, but um, I, I did that a little bit there. And then uh, with the video, when I ran uh, the clone class, and I ran two different classes there, the 375 and the 400 at AMS. That was the first time in a long time that I ran dual classes. Now, I know clone racers, especially down south, will run two, three, four, five, you know, up to ten classes, depending on how long the day is. If it's a big state race, if it's an all-day venture, this is something that they usually do. Now, I kind of wanted to talk about what, you know what you can expect in that but being I don't have a, a, a ton of experience with it what I'm going to comment on is the weight you know basically it's just going to be with the exception of your your pros and no pros and this and that I don't know for definite the rules that a lot of tracks use for that or series for that matter with the no pro the pro the this and that sometimes I know that you have to run another class in order to run the pro class okay but, you know, what would you change in your chassis in order to run all these? And it's really just weight. You know, you, you don't want to run if you naturally, you know, I'm a 200-plus I'm a pound human. Um, if I enter into, say, a 330 class, I am going to be at a significant weight disadvantage. You have to keep that in mind. But if you're somebody who is a little thinner, if you are putting weight on your cart in order to, you know, make some of the heavier classes, I know they have a rule like uh, like sumo that as a human you have to be over 200 pounds that they don't want people bolting on 100 pounds of lead weight for the little kids to run in the, in the sumo class. I get that. But basically if you're a lighter driver, you're going to be adding weight or subtracting weight to run these different classes. Now, I can't do it now because, uh, well, I don't have a clone. I, I don't have my clone yet. I don't have, my, you know, my cart set up or anything. But I plan on this summer doing just that. Like, I want to be on the scales, have lead mounted on it, remove it or put it on, and see how much it actually changes the numbers to mentally know, hey, this gave me a little more left or... I place this weight, say, right underneath my butt or, you know, the front of my leg and the weight change might be neutral. So you don't want to, you know, uh, rotational weight is a, is a thing. 
uh, with your rear axle and getting as much horsepower to ground, well, propulsion of weight is also a thing. You, like I said, you do not want to be running 375 pounds in a 330 class. Are you going to be, you know, just horribly off? Not if your cart setup is fast enough. No, if your tires are on point, you're not going to be that bad, but they're going to have a severe advantage on takeoffs. And typically, you know, it's power to weight ratio. You're going to be able to move lighter weight with a certain amount of horsepower. If you're only working with 12 to 15 horsepower, the more weight you have, the more that it's going to keep the propulsion coming off every single turn. It's going to be more bog on the motor if you have to get out of it, if you have to build back up the speed. So these things. So, uh, I think it's pretty rad. Being I came from UAS, I've never really dabbled in running another class along with UAS because open motors typically take a lot more work. You know, it's it does happen. You get, you know, I got into quite a comfortable spot with the uh, Bama 250, 270, 300, whatever you want to say, what iteration of the, that engine was, but I made it so it was... Not a bulletproof motor, but it didn't give me as many problems. So I could concentrate on things like setup and, and, and tires and this and that. And really didn't have to worry about the engine going south. But that's not always the case. And you don't want to leave, you know, if I was running UAS and clone, I would be cutting down the amount of time that I was able to work on my open, which would be, you know, ideally the primary class I was there for. But in clone racing... You know, as long as you're changing oil and, uh, you know, your your clone's fresh enough and it's making good horsepower, your setup's good, why not run, you know, extra classes? Why not run two, three classes? I mean, locally, I wouldn't run any more than two, typically at AMS. That was a little bit of a scramble. More of a scramble than what I was used to doing. We'll say that. Uh, there are people, I'm sure, that do it all the time and they're like, Psh, that's, that's child's play. You know, two, three classes? It's when you get to the four and five classes, or if you have a bigger team that can handle things like tires and preparation and, and, and assisting you and, and doing everything at a state race. You know, that's a, that's a whole different ball of wax. I'd say on a local night, you know, two, maybe three classes, that might be fun to do depending on what you're, you know, what that weight, if you're able to add or subtract weight from your cart, what that's going to do to the handling because it's, it's bound to do something. You know, I've moved things a percent or two just in you know uh, cross or whatever and it has made a made my handling you know better or worse you know so there you go guys I just I, I thought I'd bring this up I didn't know if you know maybe again this channel is primarily made for new carters you know hey you know people people run run one run a little bit <laughs> run more than one class and uh yes they do uh, it, it's a lot of fun, and I could see those big state races where you got to be there at the butt crack of dawn running that many classes just to, you know, not only for, you know, the potential for learning more about tires, but the potential for more wins, more poles, and all that stuff. I can say that, you know, running more classes might be an awesome time. So uh, there you go, guys. Another, another subject. I honestly, I can't wait to get back out to the barn. It's not that I don't mind talking about these subjects, and I'm sure you guys are just like, you know, come on, dude, show us something. <laughs> it's it's 12 degrees outside right now in New York. Uh, the snow is a-blowing. I have a concrete floor. If I use a salamander out there, it's sound-wise, it's not going to work. I don't want to freeze my buttons off. So, unfortunately, for the time being, you're going to get, you know, uh, these comment videos for a little bit till I can get back out there. So, uh, I really do appreciate every single one of you coming by, and... Uh, We'll catch you in the next video. Later.